Hey, this is David from Worship Online. I'm one of the instructors here. And throughout the years, I've gotten to tour and play on many great records, including Elevation Worship, Lauren Daigle, and Carrie Joe. And throughout my time playing with them, I've encountered a lot of different bases, used a lot of different gear throughout the years. And today, I really want to focus on the bass guitar. And we've gotten such a great response from our previous videos, including Worship Bass Guitar Tone 101, where I go over some of the more popular direct boxes that you might encounter at your church or that you'll see in guitar stores. Uh, we kind of do a full run through of some of the more popular items and uh, just to help you find the right box for you, as well as uh, we have another video where it's using the sub bass synthesizer in worship and how to utilize it to the best of your ability. But today, I really wanted to focus on the bass guitar itself. We're gonna be going over lots of different types of basses, different woods, different necks, pickups, everything that you would want to know in finding the right bass for you and how to use it in a worship setting. So today, we're going to do that. So following this video, we're going to be offering a part two where I go over some of my personal basses and I go over some of my favorite sounds and how I utilize them in, in a worship setting. So all you have to do is click the link below and we'll email that to you. So we're gonna start off with the precision bass. Made famous by Fender, it was uh, made in the 1950s, uh, 51 to be exact, and then in, in the later 50s, they kind of switched over to uh, the body style that we have today. Uh, this is definitely uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it's kind of like a, you know, a very simple design that can get the job done uh, no matter what. And as you can see, uh, we have two different, uh, it's the same base, but it's two different types of wood on the neck. We have a rosewood fretboard, and then we have a maple fretboard. And we're gonna kinda jump in, uh, hear what this thing sounds like, and kinda go over the differences that rosewood and maple might have as well. This is the Fender Precision Bass, uh, or a lot of people just call it a P bass. Um, the controls are, you know, very simple to use. It's one of the first basses that I ever played when I first got into playing bass guitar. Uh, and that's probably why I love it so much is it's just very simple. Um, you have a master volume for the pickups and then a master tone uh, for these as well. And basically all this is is, you know, you turn this up to, to, to get your sound. You know, turning this off turns the whole, whole bass off. Um, and then this is a tone knob, so if you have it wide open, you're going to have the full spectrum of low end, mid range, and highs. You turn this all, all the way down, it's going to get kind of muted, where it's really just kind of the low end. It gets really dark, and as you turn this up, it gets brighter. So uh, that's kind of what I love about this, is that it's a super simple. Uh, like I said, one master volume. I love just, you know, one volume to kind of control my sound if I have to turn it off really quickly. Uh, and these are very, very common pickups, whether you're playing a Fender bass or not, there's tons of great basses that use this style of pickup. This style of pickup is called a split coil pickup. And what that is, is they take uh, one pickup that has just one coil and they literally, all they do is just split it in half where two coils cover this pickup and the other two cover this. So this is your, this kind of captures your low end. This kind of captures your, your higher end right here on these strings. And uh, that's literally, we'll go over some other pickups later, but this is the first one I wanted to introduce you to is the split coil. For the neck, this is a rosewood neck. Um, you can tell it's rosewood because uh, it's got the darker finish. I'll go over another P bass that has a maple finish and you can kind of see the differences, you know, if you're not familiar with different wood types, you know, you just see tons of different necks. You might not know like, well, which one is right for me, uh, but I'll go over that. Um, the P bass necks generally are a little bit of a thicker neck. Uh, some bass players love that because it can they can really grab it and dig in and it just kind of helps produce like this really big growl of a sound. Like I would say the, you know, the P bass is uh, most iconic for the, just like this growly mid range 
that um, that is just really present in a mix. And so I'll just play a little bit just so you can kind of hear uh, what this thing sounds like. Uh, I'll be using my fingers as well as using a pick. And uh, for all of the bass videos, I'm just gonna be going straight into my Noble Tube Direct Box. There's not gonna be any EQ or any compression or anything different. It's just gonna be the bass going straight into the Direct Box. So here we go. This is what uh, it sounds like with the pick. All right, let's hear what this sounds like in the context of a song. So here we have the second P-Bass of the day. This is uh, very similar in a lot of ways, but there's a few key differences that we'll go over. Uh, this, the similarities is that it's the same pickups, same master volume, master tone. Uh, there's no trickery here. It's very simple. Uh, the big difference is the fretboard. If you notice, this is a maple fretboard. You can tell it's a maple fretboard because of the kind of the natural uh, blonde-ish looking wood. Like I said before, rosewood uh, generally is just that darker wood that you see on the on the fretboard. So this is a maple neck. Uh, you know, obviously there's a cosmetic difference uh, to the way the base looks. Um, a lot of people say that maple necks tend to be a little bit brighter, uh, kind of ring out uh, just a little bit differently. And uh, so we're gonna play it and uh, I'll let y'all hear the difference. So if you notice, it still still sounds like a P bass. Just has a slightly different tone to it. You know, even though this is a P bass and the the other one right there is an, is a P bass as well, they're uh, they don't sound identical. And that's what's really fun about guitars, basses. You could have multiple P basses, and each one of them has their own unique sound. And that's something that's really fun is just kind of when you're finding the right bass for you, is finding the one that you really gravitate towards. So now, let's hear what this sounds like in the context of the song.
So here we have probably the biggest question I get every day. Do I use a precision bass or a P bass or a jazz bass or a J bass as they call it? Whether you use this specific brand or not, uh, you will uh, more than likely encounter basses that either have precision style bass pickups or jazz bass style pickups. And so we're gonna transition into the jazz bass and I'm just gonna kinda go over some of the differences. Uh, right off the bat, as you can see, uh, the main difference with the jazz bass, not only is the body style different, this is a more of an offset body style, but uh, the pickups are very different. Uh, but I will also explain to you how they're very similar in the same way. So here we go. So, like I said, here we have the jazz bass. Uh, and you know, the big thing that I wanted to focus on is, would be the differences in the pickups, especially versus the precision bass, because I think those are the two big questions that bass players have. Do I use a precision? Do I use a jazz? Well, the, the true answer is you can use both. It's just which, you know, whichever one you feel most comfortable with, I would say that, let's go with that one. Um, so as you can see, Right off the bat, instead of having one split coil pickup right in the center, we actually have two single coil pickups. So, like I said about the precision bass, they basically take one of these pickups and they split it in half and plop it right there. And there you have the precision bass. But for the jazz bass, they decided to bring it back to one single coil and just put one by the neck, one by the bridge. And so this is why we have the controls that we have. We have another volume knob. So this volume knob controls this pickup. If you notice, it still kind of got that growl that the precision bass has. And that's because technically, you know, these pickups are not too far apart uh, in, in the, the pickup family. And so, what a lot of, you know, I see a lot of bass players just kind of keeping everything at, you know, max volume, just maxed out all the way. And you have this like very iconic jazz bass sound. And uh, what this is, is uh, it's these two split, since the volume is completely maxed out, uh, we're using 100% of both of these pickups. And so when you do that, it creates this like really bright, um, just like a very round sound that you can use in a lot of different styles of music, which is why a lot of bass players love jazz bass is because it gives this additional pickup and you can manipulate that however you want. What I tell a lot of bass players to do first uh, to dial in your jazz bass tone because now you're working with two volume knobs, which can get tricky at times. Uh, I would turn the neck pickup up all the way because this pickup is gonna be the more uh, boomier, I would say the meat and potatoes of your sound is coming from this pickup because it's kind of in that sweet spot on the body. And so you still got that growl. Bit brighter because it's now it's just one single coil what I would do is as you're playing bring in the neck pickup to taste whether you want it all the way up or dial it back a little bit to bring some of that growl back into it so there you go that's kind of the the layout and obviously we have the the tone knob so you can this tone knob controls tone for both of these so you know I get a lot of questions on the jazz bass and this is kind of my personal preference is to keep this at 100% and dial this in to taste as you can and the reason why I say that is to keep this always at 100% is if you just use the bridge pickup it just kind of has like a A lot of high end, kind of like a nasally kind of. It's not that you can't use this tone. 
just missing out on a lot of the low end that you would want, so. And so that's pretty much the kind of the in and out of the jazz bass electronics. I will say uh, one other key difference between a precision bass and a jazz bass, the jazz bass has a, I would say a, a thinner neck on it. And so if you're, uh, you know, if you're trying out different basses and the P bass, uh, precision bass is like a little too thick of a neck. Or if you're a guitar player and you're transitioning to bass, you know, maybe look into a jazz bass because it's going to be a smaller neck um, that might be easier to transition from guitar on. Or if you're a bass player that likes uh, easier to play necks, maybe go this route. All right, now let's hear a jazz bass in the context of a song. You're So next on our list uh, is this pickup uh, formation of, it's called a PJ. And like I said, there's tons of different brands out there that do this style of pickup. And as you can see, uh, it's basically a combination of the uh, two pickups that we just looked at. The precision bass pickup, which is the split coil. And then we have the jazz bass pickup, which is the single coil. And just to recap, just so now that we have a visual uh, on both of these pickups side by side. Uh, the way they created the P bass pickup is they basically split the single coil in half and just plopped it right there. And so that's kind of what I was going at with these two different, they might look very different, but they're still, you know, distant cousins of one another. And so here we have, uh, it's a really great design base. It kind of gives you best of both worlds. If you are a bass player that's like, oh, well, I like precision, I like a jazz bass. You know what? They have this bass for you. And so the controls, once again, are similar to a jazz bass controls, uh, where this master volume controls this. And then we have this master volume controls this pickup. And as you can see, this pickup is still kind of got that really tight, kind of more high-end sound. And you know, a lot of people might be like, well, why, why is this pickup on here if it's just always a very bright sounding, in sounding pickup? And it's like, well, it's when you have your main pickup dialed in, you can add some more clarity to your sound. That's kind of the whole premise on having a jazz style pickup closer to the bridge is it really helps bring in some of that uh, mid range and clarity that uh, you're gonna be hearing from front of house with a full band. You're gonna, if you hear the notes really well, it's generally because, you know, this is, this thing's dialed in really well. So, like I said, I kind of do this, treat this the same way as a jazz bass. I keep my main pickup uh, maxed out and then dial this back in to taste. So now we have both maxed out. As you can see, it's kind of like a good hybrid of the precision and jazz bass. 
I'll play it for you uh, with pink, just so you can kind of hear the tone difference. So right now, I have everything just maxed out so you can kind of hear everything at full, full volume. So now I'm going to dial this back a little bit just to get just different tones. I would say what's nice about this pickup selection is that it still sounds like a P bass but it kind of has some more clarity to it because of this bridge pickup right here. So there you go, that's the PJ bass. Now let's hear what this sounds like in the context of a song. For our next bass, I figured we'd change it up a little bit. And here we have the iconic Stingray bass. Um, this thing is, I would say, is a beast of a bass. Not only that, uh, it's a five string bass that I've gotten a lot of questions about five strings. And you know, I'm, you know, for me, I'm never opposed to any type of bass. Like I love five strings. I think they offer like a unique spin on the bass guitar. Uh, not only is it a five string, but it is an active bass, which means that there is a nine volt battery in here. And we'll go over all of this uh, in just a few moments. But first, let's start off by talking about this pickup. As you can see, this doesn't look like any of the previous pickups that we went over. Uh, it doesn't look like a P bass pickup, doesn't look like a jazz bass. Uh, this has got its own pickup called the Humbucker. Uh, you'll see pretty much that's the iconic pickup for a Stingray style bass. You'll see these and you'll see Humbuckers and a lot of Gibson basses. Uh, a lot of, they kind of produce a really big aggressive tone. Uh, Les Pauls, they, for guitar players, like those are, you know, very much that style pickup, but this is the bass version of that. And for the most part, um, it's two single coils uh, kind of smashed together and it uh, single coils tend to be uh, a little noisy. And so they call this the humbucker because they found a way to get the single coils kind of brought together in the sweet spot and it kind of kills the hum, which is why they call it a humbucker. And uh, the controls, there's four knobs as well as this weird switch thing. So I'm sure a lot of you might be like, why is there multiple knobs, the switch? We'll go over that. So first things first, you have your master volume. You know, this just controls the master volume of this pickup. And uh, what's really great about the humbucker is this switch kind of selects what you what are you wanting to hear so if you can see this kind of these two lines th this the magnets right here kind of represent like what are you selecting so if this switch is directed this way 
you're going to be getting this front half of the humbucker. And you move it to the center switch, it's going to be getting both of them. Dial it back to the bridge, you're just getting the bridge. And in a lot of ways, it's very similar to the, you know, the controls of a jazz bass. Even though this doesn't sound like a jazz bass, the, the theory is still the same. You know, if you have this selected to the bridge, it's gonna be more of a brighter sound. Bring both of them in. You're gonna be getting a good balance of the of the two, and if you switch it to closer to the neck, it's gonna be, you know, a lot of the good beefiness. And so, that's just the general overview of the Stingray. Now let's kind of talk about, you know, this is an active bass. What does an active bass mean? And I get a lot of questions on. Do I get a passive bass, an active bass? Some, some of you might even be asking like, what is active or passive? I don't, I don't know. So I'll go over that. Um, this bass, as you can see from, if I flip this over, this has got a little battery compartment right here where you put a nine volt battery into it. Anytime you encounter a bass with this, um, it means it has an active preamp built into the bass. And so that's when people say passive or active, this is kind of helps signify this is an active style bass. And uh, what the active basses do that some of the more passive basses don't is uh, this has a, th a three band EQ. And in layman's terms, that means you have a bass knob, you have a mid control knob, and you have a high end knob, similar to what you encounter on an amp. If you look at an amp, any one of these amps behind me, they're gonna have a uh, low end, a mid range, and a, and a high end knob. And that's essentially what this is. And so, uh, you know, this is the main difference with an active bass versus a passive bass. If you grab a precision bass or a jazz bass, most of them are gonna be passive, which just means there's just the, the volume and the tone knobs. And, anything, and that's pretty much it. For this, you do need a nine volt to be able to activate uh, the EQ. So I'll go over that so you can tell. Like, so I'll keep both pickups engaged. If I turn the highs and mids off and boost the lows, That's kind of the idea is it's, it's just, it gives you so much control over your tone as to what you want to be sending. Active basses, because they have the nine volt battery, they have the EQ built in. Generally, they're gonna be a more uh, aggressive sounding bass. So kind of the big uh, draw for an active bass, uh, if you're playing slap bass or, you know, you know, that might be gospel music or funk, uh, where, you, you know, having an active bass where you can really kind of control the EQ is super helpful. It just kind of gives it this shape that if, you know, you try to slap on a different style bass, maybe certain things might not be heard because, you know, when you're playing it in a more percussive style, you kind of need more of a certain frequency, less of another frequency, just so you can kind of have the full spectrum of like, what am I trying to send? And so that's where this really comes in handy. I also get a lot of questions on five strings. You know, five string basses, you can pretty much find any bass you want with a fifth string. 
You know, that could be a jazz bass, a P bass, uh, really any style of bass that you look for. You can generally find one with this additional fifth string. So with this additional string, this is a low B string, so it gives you an even uh, lower uh, selection of notes that you can play. A general four string bass is just E, A, D, and G. So if we look on this five string, where do we have our low E on this bass? So you have it right here, and you could also play it on the fifth fret right there. So the, basically the B string gives you it gives you uh, some lower notes that you can't play on a four string. And uh, like I said, that works really great um, with tons of different styles of music, works great with worship music. Um, there's tons of great bass players I know that use a five string to really get some of the low growl that you can't get from a four string. Um, a few other practical reasons that you might switch to a five string, and when I actually started out playing on a five string, I just really loved having the additional notes, and at a very uh, early start, I realized that I could still play some of the the notes that are on the E string. I could play them up here and get a different type of sound. So if you notice, this is a thicker string than the E string. And if even if you play a G on the E string, it's the same pitch, but it produces a different tone. This is really great if you're trying to play whole notes if you're playing more, just like wanting to lay like a big, just a huge open note. I would always play that note on the B string because it's a thicker string and it can get a bigger sound to it. If you notice, like I said, this is a G. This is another G, but it's just bigger, darker, warmer. Um, and it's the same pitch, but a different tone because of the, the string. Same with here. This is a this is a B. Same pitch, but different tone. So that's what's really fun about the five string is it doesn't just offer you more notes to play, but it gives you more tone selecting, different voicings. And so really utilizing that can make you a very well-balanced player. So now let's hear what a stingray sounds like in the context of a song. I thought it would be fun just to kind of throw in a just kind of a different unique bass that you know if you're a guitar player wanting to switch over to bass but you know if the jazz bass is too big for you you know like this is a really fun bass that really anyone can play uh, it's a short scale bass this specific one is a Fender Mustang but you know you can find tons of different types of short scales and uh, not only is this a short scale, but uh, I wanted to include it because it has flat wound strings. Um, you know, I get a, a lot of questions about, do I use round wounds? Do I use flat wounds? And you know, I'm sure some of you are like, I don't know what either of those are. 
So we're gonna kinda break that down as well. And uh, so right here, it's still very similar to the P bass, you know? It's kinda like, keep it simple. Uh, you can get a lot out of just simplicity. So we have master volume, master tone. If you notice, these are still uh, split coil pickups. You know, it's still in that same P bass, like keep it, keep it simple. And you know, a lot of misconceptions with short scales or flat wounds is you can't use it because it sounds really thin or it sounds too dark to use if you're using flat wounds. It's like, well, that's not necessarily true. This is, um, experience uh, you can get a lot of big tones out of this bass it's just uh, what's really makes this different than a P bass or a jazz bass it's not, even though it has similar pickups it's still made differently and not all basses sound the same the way this bass is, is designed it sounds totally different than any of the other basses we have given the fact that it's a short scale bass which means the neck is actually shorter than a standard uh, long scale bass. So that means because it's shorter, it gives it a nice tighter sound. And um, because of it being flat wounds, it also produces a different tone as well. Now generally, uh, I'll, I'll show you an example of, so these are steel strings. Um, it's, I would say most of my bass playing, I use steel strings. Uh, it produces a good, it's, it's, I would say it's the more common of the two uh, in most modern worship settings uh, in modern music in general. It's just got a very nice, bright uh, clarity, as, but it still retains the low end really well. I would say most of the basses that you listen to on records, it's gonna be these uh, steel strings. But for this bass, if you notice, uh, the strings have a darker look to them. And that's kind of the, one of the iconic round wound looks is that these kind of look very muted, very dark. And if even when you feel them, you can feel like, whoa, these feel really smooth. And that kind of, that definitely comes out in the tone. These produce a darker, uh, think more like old school uh, bass tone. Motown, um, you know, some of the, like the Beatles records, Paul McCartney used like flat wounds on his short scales. It's got that really iconic sound. Uh, but what's really cool is that it still keeps the low end, the high end. Uh, it's just what really helps, it just produces a different sound in the mid range. And I tell bass players, never be afraid of the mid range. That's where your, that's where all the sound of your notes are. That's what people are hearing in the mix. And so, this is everything cranked up. It's still got some, just has a very different, like I said, take in the mid-range. It still has its clarity, but you can really dial back the tone knob. get that really iconic that really thumpy just really smooth sounding low end uh, but you can still utilize it in worship music I play this all the time in worship settings I think it sounds great it's just like a fun unique take it's always cool to have a slightly different bass in your mix so uh, Oh, real quick, I'll even play this with a pick just so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. As you can tell, you know, I even have the tone kind of off a little bit. It's just got a nice... You can still hear the clarity. It's just, a di like I said, a different take on what a bass can sound like. Another thing that's kind of fun too is you notice that this has, uh, you put the strings through the body. 
You'll see that on a lot of different style basses, not just this one, but this one has, it's called string through, whereas some of the other basses, the strings go straight from the bridge. But what's kind of nice, if you notice, if you see a bass with these little holes in the back, is it goes through the body, and some people say that it kind of produces a, uh, give, gives you more sustain, or the notes just kind of, because the, the strings are coming through the body, and that's getting picked up in the sound. So you're getting more of the sound of the overall body versus just it going on the bridge. So that's a, that's a nice feature with this bass. It's got a thumb rest. It's very classic. Uh, you know, a lot of the older basses, you know, you could just rest your thumb right here. Some of them are right there. You know, so you have, you know, you might see this on a lot of other popular basses as well. Just so you know, it's just kind of good, more of an aesthetic thing, but it's still very cool. Uh, so yeah, let's hear what this sounds like in the context of a song. on to part two of our video, where I'll be going over my personal basses, why I choose to use them, how I use them, uh, I've played on a lot of great records with them, toured with these guitars, and uh, just kind of going over what I love about these style of basses. So all you have to do is click the link below and we'll get it sent right to you. So let's go check them out. <laughs> 